as it's raged. So a year has come and gone and within that year I tried a lot of new makeup products and I wanted to share with you guys some of my favourites from 2013. <laughs> Starting off with a couple of primers that stand out from 2013, a new one, a new brand for me to try was Makeup Store and I really really enjoyed the Makeup Store Skincare System Skin Serum. This is just a clear primer, went over your skin, feels really really soft and silky but it also has um, properties that actually benefit the skin as well. The other primer that I really enjoyed using was Benefits the Pore Professional. This one I had tried previously to 2013 but in 2013 was when I really started using it on a regular basis. Again really really silky, really smooth, really helps your makeup last throughout the day and helps fill in those pores and just makes the application of foundation and other products that you put on top of it so much nicer. <laughs> 2013 was a year where I tried a ton of foundation which is really unusual for me because before then I tended to not try too many different foundations because my skin is bad, it's sensitive, it's acne prone, it's oily and using any products on my skin that it doesn't like just causes me a world of issues so I usually don't try a lot. This year I did from the drugstore, a couple that stood out to me, one was the CoverGirl Outlast Stay Fabulous 3-in-1 Foundation, a new offering from CoverGirl in 2013, and a fantastic one. CoverGirl is one of these brands that I don't talk a lot about and you don't hear much about, and then all of a sudden they have these gems of products, and this was definitely one of them. Really great coverage, really long wearing, nice on the skin. I also really enjoyed the L'Oreal The Foundation, or L'Oreal The Foundation True Much, True Match Super Blendable. I have no idea what order in which you read that, but it's the True Match Foundation. Not new for 2013, I don't think. It may have been a 2012 release, but it was new for me definitely in 2013. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. I love the Lumi Magic, but I was this is the one that I really enjoyed in 2013. Great coverage, long wearing, gorgeous foundation. I didn't try as many high-end foundations because my budget just doesn't stretch that far, but one that stands out is the YSL Touche Eclat. I do think this might have been a 2012 release as well, but I tried it in 2013 and really, really enjoyed it. It gives a really nice natural finish to the skin, not too matte, not too dewy, just that like satin finish. Really, really enjoyed this foundation and it had more coverage than I expected it to as well. So before we move on to concealers, I wanted to mention a BB cream. It was new for 2013, the Maybelline Dream pure BB cream with um, for oily skin with salicylic acid in it. I really really liked this. Again it had more coverage than I expected it to. Definitely more coverage than a lot of BB creams that I have tried, particularly western BB creams. Went on nicely on the skin, didn't leave that wet look, that oil slick look. Really really enjoyed this. Great for the summertime too when I don't want to wear a lot of makeup. <laughs> 2013 was the year of the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer. I have used quite a bit of it as you can see. Absolutely love this concealer. Stays on long, gives great coverage and go under my eyes on my blemishes and I see myself continuing to use this concealer for a very, very long time. The drugstore standout for me would have to have been the Rimmel Wake Me Up Concealer. I have a couple of shades. I have the, the very fair light shade and also the soft beige shade. Again, it's a concealer that I can use both under my eyes and on my blemishes. Gives quite good coverage, easy to apply, and overall a really nice offering from the drugstore. Again, new to Australia at least in 2013. <laughs> For powder, a standout for me is actually from Essence. This is the All About Matte Fixing Contact fixing compact powder I should say. This is just a light, a white translucent powder. Even if it, I think it might give a slight light, I guess, hue to it, but I like to use it under my eyes and to set my T-zone. Really, really finely milled, very, very soft and thin and just helps keep your makeup set and keeps your makeup matte all day. Love that and it's really inexpensive too. The more high-end offering that I really enjoyed this year was from Hourglass and it's their ambient lighting powders. I purchased these when they were first released from Mecca Cosmetica in the full size and then towards the end of the year picked up this uh, limited edition uh, palette, I guess you would call it. I really, really enjoyed dim light, but I also enjoy the radiant light and incandescent light in this palette here. Gorgeous powders, very, very smoothing on the skin and a really nice product from Hourglass. <laughs> Moving on, but keeping to the face, 
for bronzers. I have one that I've been using constantly. I didn't don't think it was new for 2013. I believe I first tried it in 2012. Hopefully I'm getting that right. Maybe it was 2013, the start of 2013. Not 100% sure, but what it, either way, it's my go-to bronzer. It's the Too Faced Chocolate Soleil, and this is the Milk Chocolate shade. As you can see, I have hit pan on this well and truly. It is a fantastic bronzer. It's my go-to everyday bronzer. Love it and will continue to use it throughout 2014. One product that I know is definitely new for 2013 is the Makeup Store Micro Shadow in Maasai. This was my go-to contour product for the year and I continue to use it. Just a really nice pigmented shade that I use to contour the hollows of my cheeks, down my nose, sort of anywhere where I need contouring. And it just gives a really nice shadow effect to the skin without looking too orange. <laughs> This year was the first year that I didn't use a lot of highlighters, but probably my most used one, if I did sort of go or was wearing a highlighter, would have to be the Balm's Mary Luminizer. I believe I had purchased this right at the start of 2013, and it was probably my most used highlighter for the year. A really, really gorgeous, shimmery shade. Looks really, really pretty, and it's just a fantastic product from the Balm. Gets a lot of love on YouTube, and there's a reason for that. It's just a really great product. <laughs> Lastly for the face, let's talk about blush for blush favourites. I have a few. The first one is Benefits Rockateur. I really, really like this blush. It smells delicious too. It's just this really gorgeous kind of pinky, rosy gold shade. It has a slight sort of sheen to it. It's a really nice colour to the cheeks. Absolutely love that product. A really nice offering from Benefit. Another new product and definitely a favourite cream blush of mine was a new offering from Chanel. This is the Le Blush Creme de Chanel. No, that's not even a French accent, Rachel, but this is a gorgeous cream blush. Really, really nice. It almost has a slightly cream to powder formula. Not quite, but it just it sets really nicely on the skin. Doesn't look oily, doesn't, um, I guess, slide away too quickly. Quite long wearing for a cream blush. The lastly was a new offering from The Balm, which I thought was absolutely fantastic. This is the In Stain Blushes. I picked a few of these up from David Jones a little while ago. My probably most used one would be Toil, which is this really pretty pink shade, slightly peachy but mainly a pink, mid-tone pink shade. Gorgeous, really, really long wearing. You do have to be careful. I find that I apply these with a kind of stippling brush, otherwise they, they can be a little bit hard to blend out. Super duper pigmented, which is fantastic, but like I said, you do have to be careful when applying them, but fantastic product. Absolutely love those from the balm. <laughs> Moving on to the eye area, for brows I have loved two products. The first is the IT Cosmetics Brow Power. I picked this up at iMats this year so I really only used this for the last sort of quarter of the year. But a really nice universal shade pencil and it has the little um, spoolie on the end. Nice waxy texture and I just, I've been using this pretty much non-stop since I got it so definitely a favourite for 2013. As was the Benefit to Give Me Brow, I have this in the shade Medium. This is just, I stood out to me because it was just a product that was so different to anything that I had been using previously. It has the world's teeny tiniest little brush. It is a tinted brow gel, but it does have fibres in it, the same way that a mascara will have fibres in it, that's supposed to make your brows look fuller. I just really, really enjoy this product and I thought it deserved a mention, particularly because of how unique it is. <laughs> Eyeshadow, it's really, really difficult to pick favourites for the year. I try so many different eyeshadow products and different palettes and things, but for me, the standout, something that I think I got for my birthday in 2013, is the Urban Decay Naked Basics palette. Honestly, this is a fantastic product. It is my go-to eye look. They're all matte shades when I don't know what to put on my eyes. I use this, but I also use this product in conjunction with other palettes, with other individual eyeshadows. I'm forever using probably Naked 2 is my most used shade because I use it as a, like a blending out shade constantly. I've also used both Naked 2 and Faint in my brows before. I'm regularly reaching for Walk of Shame for all over the lid, for a highlight on the brow bone to clean up any messes. They're all just fantastic shades, great for traveling, full size mirror really cute sleek packaging. I will never be without this palette. The other product that I thought stood out for me in 2013 was this little Estee Lauder eyeshadow duo. This one's in the shade Raisins. This is another eyeshadow palette that I just found myself reaching for constantly throughout 2013 ever since I got it. I just I love the shades. It's 
pink shade and this burgundy shade go great together. I feel like they complement my eye colour really well as well. An easy look to apply when I just can't be bothered of thinking what I want to apply on my eyes or for my eyeshadow. <laughs> this next product is not going to be a shock to anybody who's watched any of my videos throughout the entire year. Favourite eyeliner has to go to the Maybelline Master Precise Liquid Liner. I use this constantly. This wins the award for the most repurchased makeup product of 2013. Maybe my most repurchased makeup product ever, which is amazing for somebody who has a ridiculous amount of makeup. Um, I do find that this probably dries out a little bit quicker than I would like but overall fantastic product really nice thin flexible tip the other 2013 love for eyeliner has to be the Rimmel Scandalize waterproof coal cudgels these are fantastic eyeliners whether you use them on the lid on the upper lash line on the waterline wherever you want to put these babies they work really well my most used colors would have to be the nude which I use on my lower waterline and the bronze shade which I use on my upper lash line Fantastic, very, very creamy, very blendable if you want to blend them out, and inexpensive as well. If 2012 was the year of Maybelline the Falsies for me, then 2013 was definitely the year of the Jordana Best Lash Extreme Volumizing Mascara. I was looking through all my mascaras and I did quite... I did acquire quite a few in 2013, but this one just had to be my favourite. I used it the most, I repurchased it a few times, and I just really like the way that it looks on my lashes. Lip products are definitely my favourite products to use and to try out. For lipsticks, I have a couple of favourites. The first was the Rimmel Kate Moss line, particularly the matte line, which was new in 2013. I really, really love number 107, which is this really nice deep burgundy shade. It was probably my most worn shade of lipstick, particularly towards like throughout the middle of the year when it was winter time. The other new product that I got to try in 2013 was the YSL Rouge Voluptu lipsticks. Oh my goodness, these are amazing. If I could afford it, I would have the entire collection because they just they smell so so lovely. My two most used colors would probably be number 1, which is this really pretty nude shade, as well as number 11, which is this gorgeous bright pink shade, definitely a Rachel color. Oh, they smell so good, feel so soft and creamy on the lips. The packaging is absolutely stunning, so luxurious, a fantastic product. For lip gloss, I have a few different products. The first were new for me to try in 2013, and they are the NYX Butter Glosses. I can't believe I took so long to try these because they are absolutely amazing. Love them. I love the color payoff that you get. I love the feel of them, the smell of them, the texture of them. They're not sticky at all. I probably used the tiramisu and the strawberry parfait the most. Another standout product, I did mention the YSL Glossy Stains in my 2012 favourites because they were probably one of the most unique products on the market. I just had never tried a lip gloss and like that. And in 2013, L'Oreal released the drugstore version of those. These are the um, Caress Shine or Shine Caress lip glossy lip stains. Basically, it's a glossy lip stain that goes on glossy and the, it, the product really lasts quite a while. Absolutely loved these and a really nice drugstore offering if you can't afford the YSL version. In a similar vein, I wanted to mention the Chi Chi Glossy Lip Stains. I haven't seen these talked about a lot on YouTube, but these are a very similar product to the YSL uh, Glossy Stains or the L'Oreal ones. Again, they go on glossy, but they stain your lips. These last forever. I've swatched these on my hand and then tried to wash them off and just not been able to get them off my skin. They will last all day. A definite favourite of mine from 2013 was the Christian Dior Creme de Rose Lip Balm. I finally splurged and picked this up in 2013 and I'm so glad that I did. This is my second one. It's just a gorgeous lip balm with a light rose scent. Feels really, really good creamy and thick on the lips without being sticky at all. Really, really hydrating. A fantastic product that I will continue to use. So that is it. They are all my makeup favorites from 2013. I wanted to throw in a couple of makeup tool favorites just to finish off this video. 
The first one is my Real Techniques Expert Face Brush. I picked this up earlier in the year from iHerb. I highly recommend iHerb for picking up your Real Techniques as well as Physicians for Formula and a few other different brands because you get them at US recommended retail prices. They have really cheap shipping. I always put a coupon code and a link in the description box below so if you want to try them out for the first time you can get a discount. But I highly, highly just recommend this brush. I love it for applying foundation. It's the right size and shape to really sort of I guess I get a really nice finish from your products the other new um, brush line for me was the Wayne Goss line probably my favorite although my most used brush from that was the number two brush this one here I just got so much use out of but I really really enjoyed all of the brushes they just stand out as being a fantastic line of brushes really really soft definitely on the expensive side but well worth the money because I just really enjoyed them I did do a um, review of the whole whole line which I'll link in the description box below for you guys if you'd like to check that out in 2013 it was also the first time that I finally got to try the beauty blender and I'm definitely a beauty blender convert I will never go back to not having one of these these are just fantastic sponges I love the way that it applies foundation and concealer I can also use this to apply like cream highlighter or cream bronzer they just they really really stand out as a fantastic way to apply foundation to get a really really flawless finish however I did also want to mention the real techniques sponge this came out towards the end of the year or the second half of the year while I haven't tried them side by side I do enjoy using both of them and I find that this one gives a really really nice finish as well if you can't afford to splurge on the beauty blender then I would recommend the real techniques as a uh, makeup sponge because it really does a great job and then lastly I want to mention my Shu Uramura eyelash curlers again this was a um, sort of towards the end of the year purchase for me but I really really enjoyed these I find that I never get my um, like lid caught in these for some reason they're just the perfect shape for me to curl my lashes get in quite close but I never seem to hurt myself with these so for that reason alone I absolutely love these so that is it for my 2013 makeup and tool favourites. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and I hope it's been helpful for you. If you've done a video like this, definitely share the link in the comments below so I can see it and so other people can see it. I've also done a hair care and skincare 2013 favourites, which I'll put a link for right here if you guys would like to check that out. And other than that, I'm going to go. I hope you guys are all having a fantastic day and a fantastic start to 2013 sorry, 2014, and I will see you guys all in my next video. Bye!